Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, the sun is going down behind me. We're gonna be doing some night fishing for crappie. And actually, I posted a video on the double jig setup, how it kind of looked on 2D sonar. And I had some questions of what it looks like on a flasher unit and also whether to put a flasher unit on your boat, open water fishing, whether that's a good idea or not. So today, or, or tonight, nighttime, probably gonna fish till about 10 o'clock. Try to catch some nighttime crappie on the double jig setup again, only this time using the flasher unit or the flasher screen on this Garmin I wanted to show you and uh, talk about whether that's a good idea for a boat or not. Let's, uh, let's get inside the shack and start catching fish. All right, well, we are in the ice shack here. I'm just gonna walk through what I got tied on. Double jig setup, and what you're looking at on the sonar unit here is actually the flasher screen for the Garmin. Now, this is the same Garmin I have on my Panoptics, or I, the same Garmin I use for Panoptics. And I guess a lot of, I got a question from one of the other YouTubers I've actually filmed with before. They were actually curious about using this flasher unit on their boat and whether it was worth it to go out and get one that had the flasher unit like this uh, because they wanted to vertically jig below their boat. Um, you don't need to do that. Most units, I'm gonna actually go back here. This traditional, they'll call it traditional on this thing. Your 2D sonar, if you notice here on the right, there's this column, it's a very narrow column. Both the Humminbird and the Garmin, I'm sure the Lowrance is very, very similar. That's the real-time sonar. You will be able to see your jigs pop up. I'm just gonna drop these jigs down there. Um, I showed you already on the Humminbird unit I had. The, all right, there they go at the top right of the screen. There's the top jig, that, or the bottom jig. The top jig is pretty small, uh, but that is the real-time sonar Garmin unit. Humminbird unit, both have them. Lowrance probably has it too. So you don't really need the flasher unit on your boat if you want to try to vertically jig and actually see your jigging pattern in real time. Um, and then everything to the left is your historical data. But I wanted to walk through the actual uh, flasher unit setup. Flasher unit, there we go. On these LCD screens, the Humminbird that I have actually has this same setup. Um, it's a little different screen. This one is a is actually much clearer because the Humminbird unit I have is, I think it's probably four or five years old now, uh, but it'll still work. And as you can see, I'm gonna have to turn up my gain a little bit here. As you can see right there, so there's my bottom jig and my top jig is right there. I'm actually gonna turn that down because the top jig Top jig's actually pretty small, but once I throw a minnow on it, I'll be able to see it. And the reason that these units, the flasher units are really great for ice fishing, you don't have to have one with the LCD screen. You can have just a, a flasher unit like a Vexlar. Humminbird actually makes just a flasher unit. Um, they're probably, they're the most widely used ice fishing sonar. But I wanted to show you what the double jig setup looked like on this flasher unit, because I'm sure there were gonna be questions about it. And uh, I'm gonna throw some minnows on. There's some fish down here already. So let's see if we can catch some. I'm using these glow jigs because it's nighttime and I'm fishing. These fish are like 25 to 30 feet of water. So the first jig I have on, there we go. It's a white, it's got a little green dot on the back of it. And then the bottom jig is a chartreuse in white. It's a lot, much larger jig though. And uh, they're both glow jigs, so I, like, I just need to throw them on this. Yeah, it's really bright. Or if you have the push button glow jigs that light up real quick, uh, to just hold it on these for about 15, 20 seconds and they'll start glowing underwater. So I'm gonna hook some minnows on these and drop them down. There's actually some fish down. Just like that, there we go. So there are a bunch of fish down there. Let's try and drop this thing down and try to catch them. Actually the goal, the little, little goal that I had was actually try to catch two fish on the same rig. I tried this in the summertime. It works in the summertime, mostly because you can really move the baits around, but when you can only vertically jig this stuff, it's, uh, it's really hard. All right, here we go. Dropping them in, minnow one and minnow two. And 
and there they are. Now that I have my minnows on there, you can really see the separation between the two jigs. When it was just the jigs and the minnows weren't on there, they were kind of hard. The top jig was really hard to see. But it looks like there's a fish mark at about 24 feet. I'm going to stop it just above him. Try not to scare him like I just did. Let's see if he comes back. It's hard to tell, but that, that is my top jig and that's my bottom jig. I think there's two fish staring right at it. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. The goal of this is actually to keep that lure above them because they're going to feed up. If you drop it too far below them or if you drop it too fast onto them, you're just going to scare the fish. See if that one below. Oh, that one's really aggressive. Come on. Oh, and I missed him. I missed him. My drag, drag is not set. See if I can get another one that he's really aggressive like that here. This one right here. That that guy's aggressive. That guy's coming up the water column at it. There we go. Come on. That one's gonna hit it. There he is. Got him. Oh, that's a big one, too. That's a good fish, unless there's two of them on there. Wow. That's a good fish. Because it is a good fish. Let's throw on the bump board here. I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess probably 11, 11 and a half. Hit the bottom jig. Oh, yes. Okay, let's throw him on the bump board. And he's right at 11. Right at 11. Some nighttime crappie, there we go. Now I understand why people would want to use some sort of flasher unit if you're trying to vertically jig below the boat. Um, I know a lot of setups actually have this, this exact screen. So if you're bow mounted and you're vertically jigging below your trolling motor, I understand why people might want to use that. Uh, but I, I don't think you really need to. I think the, the 2D sonar unit's good enough. Oh, that's a good mark. That's a good mark. Come up and hit it. He's going to hammer it. He's going to hit the little the bottom jig. Not very aggressive, though. Got him. Got him. These are some good fish. These are some really good fish. Jeez. Yep. That's a, that's a 12 plus right there. Holy smokes. You're hammering that bottom jig. That is an easily a 12 inch fish. Nighttime crappie bite. Right there, nighttime crappie bite. Right. Oh, he's shy. Shy at 12, he's 11 and three quarters. But that's still a very nice fish. Nighttime crappie bite, double minnow setup. Double jigs. I can only imagine what two 11 inch fish is going to feel like if I get them at one time. Alright, so there they are at the top, about eight feet down. I don't know, those fish wouldn't bite, so I have to readjust the camera. This is great banter. Fantastic. <laughs> There's a hit. There he is. Got him. Doesn't feel as big. Because he's not. He's still a decent fish. He's probably 10 inches. Bottom jig again. Ooh. Fish number three. Throw him on the bump board for you real quick. Uh, he's just shy. He's almost 10. He's just under, just under 10 inches. I'm actually going to let him go. Let's drop back down to like 28 feet there. Seems like there's, there might be some more aggressive fish. Oh yeah. There's some fish a little bit deeper. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh no, and I missed him. I missed him. feel like I have to let them take it. They'll hit the minnow's tail and then that second
bite is when they suck the whole jig in. There we go. Got him. Got him that time. I don't think he's that big. Uh, he doesn't feel as big as the last... Oh, wait. Wait. I could be wrong. No, he's not. Well, he's still... The ones that are deeper, I feel like, are a little bit smaller. Those two I cut up at by 24, 25 feet have been the bigger ones. It's another nine and a half, ten inch fish though. Not a bad crappie. He's a ten and a quarter. Anything that ten to twelve inch range I'm gonna keep today. Nice black crappie. Nighttime fishing. Alright, so here's what I wanted to show you. Uh, with this specific Garmin setup, this is the same. This is the Garmin uh, 7.3CV. It's the ice fishing bundle I got. Um, I've shown you panned optics on it, but this is the flasher unit. I wanted to show you the uh, how you can change a cone angle. So I'm going to go to my menu. I'm going to go, go to beam whip. And I'm going to hit select. Now it's going to give me choices from 16 degrees all the way to 7 degrees. Uh, of my cone angle and basically if I can get an overhead shot here that's 16 degrees um, it's gonna be a little bit under my one-third because it's 19 20 degrees running at 200 kilohertz is about one-third the depth so it's gonna give me a little bit narrower of a, of a bottom I don't think it's like a one-quarter uh, I don't think it's that narrow but it's just under a third so one-third of 40 feet is about 13 I think it was 13.2 if I did the math right um, last time, I think I did that last time, is 13.2 feet, and that's the diameter of my cone angle. This is probably just, because it's 16 degrees, it's just underneath that, so it's probably 12 feet, roughly, uh, in diameter. But, most sonar units can only have the option of uh, a dual beam, so it's like a 19, 20 degree beam, and then a 9 degree beam. And, uh, which is what, actually what my Humminbird has. Now the 9 degree allows you to focus in deeper water, it doesn't have all the clutter uh, when you're fishing in 40 feet of water. But this one actually I can move by 1 degree increments downward to where I feel like I get the best picture. All the way down to 7. Now this is a very very tight cone angle. I mean I'm, I'm probably fish seeing less than 4 or 5 feet of the lake bottom right now. Um, so anything inside that four or five feet, I get a really good picture out of because this is telling the unit, don't worry about anything outside that cone. Just populate anything that, that's inside that cone right now. It gives more pixels to the screen. I'm not actually gonna go back and show you the 2D sonar with this thing on. So if I can go to my beam here, and on 2D I can do the same thing. I'll start it at 16. So here's 16 degrees, which is a little bit under one third the width. As you can see, there's a lot of little blue marks. There's a fish right there at about that. That's at 25 foot mark, 24, 25. Those crappie have been sitting right there. But if I go all the way down to seven, it starts to, I'm gonna have to turn my gain down because what it's gonna do is gonna, everything that's within that seven degree cone, um, it's granting more pixels which is why actually you're seeing a little bit more on the screen get picked up. Um, that 16 degree cone, it's trying to cram everything in so it's granting very, very small pixels or very few pixels to a single image. So basically what's happening is when I have it at seven degrees, all this stuff you see right here, when I had that at 16 degrees, it wasn't getting picked up because the sonar system was telling, or the, the sonar was telling it, the computer here, or your display, don't worry about it, it's too small to be displayed on the unit. But when you bring it all that cone down to seven degrees, all of a sudden it doesn't have to cram, try to cram all the extra stuff in that was at 16 degrees or 20 degrees, whichever system you're using. And now it can grant pixels, like you see here, to those little small bait fish. Or there might be particles in the water right now. Probably what I'm seeing, I'm gonna have to turn my game down. But I just wanted to show you that quick little cool setup on the Garmin units. Got him. You hit it once and you just let him take it. That's a good fish. That's a really good fish. Unless he's wrapped around the transducer, which he might be. Or it's just a tank. Absolute tank.
tank of a crappie. Oh my goodness. That might be my PB right there. Holy smokes. That's, that might be close to a 15 inch fish right there. Absolute tank. Look at that. It's like a mouth of a one pound bass. Holy smokes. Throw them on the bump board for you real quick. Whoa, whoa. I think he is, I don't know if you can see it. He is just shy of 15. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for me tonight. Absolute tank of a crappie. Hope you learned a little bit about these flasher units, even though this is on an LCD screen. Same concept with just a regular flasher unit, but they're great for ice fishing. I highly recommend buying one. The fastest way to find fish is with a flasher unit for ice fishing, so I highly recommend getting one. I'll link a few below. Uh, Comment below your biggest crappie. This isn't my biggest, but it's pretty darn close. I think it's it's like an inch shy of just my biggest. So 15 inch, just shy of 15. Giant crappies at night. Get out on the water. Night fishing. I know a lot of you wanted to see this. Giant, giant crappie. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to like the video. Comment again your biggest fish. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, Click that red subscribe button and click that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. So do both of those. Click that red subscribe button. Click that bell. All right. We'll see ya.